ओम नमो जीवाय ओम नमो भगवती वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवती वासुदेवाय हरे कृष्ण हरे हरे वाटिस थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर जॉइनिंग टुडे वी सीक द ब्लेसिंग्स ऑफ ब्रदर माधव ब्रदर श्याम सुन कृष्ण बलराम बाल गोपाल कोनिता शिलोपा गुरु महाराज एंड द असेंबल्ड डिवोटीज कंटिन्यूइंग विद द कोर्स ऑन सनातन धर्म एंड द इंपोर्टेंस ऑफ गो माता हम सो according to the vedic tradition we have seven mothers and uh, these have been listed actually by chanakya pandit and uh, often prabhupad uh, would quote these uh, seven mothers so let's have a look atma mata guru patni brahmani raja patnika denu rat datra tatvi tatha prithvi sap daita mataras mata one's own mother of course the wife of the guru guru mata in other mother is a wife of a brahman wife of a king the earth mother earth the nurse is also regarded as mother and finally go mata she is regarded to be our mother even though she falls in the animal category yet she is extraordinarily amazing personality so krishna himself describes um the position of go mata in bhagavatam 11:16:14 bamarishanam bhuguraham राजाश्रीनाभिधानीस्मीदेनुषु so the it is said that the uh, the body of the cow uh, includes all of the devatas the uh, 33 crore devatas um truly extraordinary even lakshmi devi wanted to a place in gomata's body and everything was taken up so she took the place at the back side of gomata so let's have a look at the manifestation of gomata the vedic literature state that all the cows of this world are descendants of kamadenu or surubi who is the mother of all cows kamadenu is a miraculous cow of plenty who resides in the spiritual world and provides whatever is desired these gomatas are like kalp they like the kalpa viksha trees anything that is desired by from uh, the, the gomata will provide quite extraordinary this is a beautiful verse uh, which describes um about uh, lord krishna's eternal position चिंतामणि प्रकर सत्मसुकल्परक्ष लक्षावतेशु शुरबीरादि फालयन्त लक्ष्मी सहस्र सत संभ्रम सेवमनम गोविन्दमादि पुरुषम तमहम जामि आय वर्शिप गोविन्द द प्राइम इवल लॉर्ड द फर्स्ट प्रोजेनेटर हु इज टेंडिंग द काउस यिल्डिंग ऑल डिजायर in abodes built with spiritual gems surrounded by millions of purpose trees always served with great reverence and affection by hundreds and thousands of lakshmis or gopis so this is really interesting the first progenitor supreme personality of god who is tending the cows that's his job <laughs> eternal job tending the cows Kamadhen manifested on earth during the churning of the cosmo cosmic ocean. So when the devatas and the demons this worked together to churn the ocean, 
and they churn the ocean um, by the help of, of the second incarnation, second of the ten incarnations, Kurma, and they use the mountain Mandara as a, a churning rod. In Vasuki, the snake was, sorry, the churning rod was the snake, Vasuki, and the mountain was the churn. And on top of the mountain was seated Ajita, who was balancing the uh, mountain on the on on Kurma on the in the ocean. As they were churning, many things came out. Initially, poison came out, which Lord Shiva very kindly protected everybody from. But one of the and then the nectars, the po the positive things started to come out. And one of them was the Surabhi cow, who was gifted then to Vashishta Muni. She was presented to the seven sages. Oh, sorry, so seven sages by, by the demigods. And in course of time came in the possession of the sage Vashisht. So he was one of the seven sages. Simply by saluting the cow, one gains all dharma and wealth. The cow is worth being worshipped by all. Hmm. And of course, the Lord Krishna himself worships, worships the cow. All that is sacred, it can be found in the cows. The 330 million devatas reside in the body of Kama Deni. The four pillars, the four uh, legs of the cow symbolize the four Vedas, the four pillars of religion, Austerities, cleanliness, compassion, truthfulness. The tits of the other four goals of human life. Karma, dharma, moksha, desire, prosperity, duty, liberation. The sun is exemplified by the face as is the moon. So this is where actually the sun resides in the face of Gomata as well as the moon. The shoulders are a symbol of Agni, the god of fire. The, her horns, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. The tip is Brahma, middle is Vishnu, and base is Shiva. Her eyes are the sun and the moon. Lakshmi resides in her dung. Gomeye, Vasate, Lakshmi. And uh, um, usually, Stool is considered very impure. But the Vedic scriptures tell us that cow dung is pure, which is really incredible. So, of course, uh, scientists have proven this as well over time, that cow dung is pure. And it has antiseptic qualities. In Bharat, um, many walls are covered by cow dung. Kama then exists in five different forms, Nanda, Sunanda, Surabhi, Sumana, Sushila, other names are Savala, Matri, Maitrik, Matrika. And just like her daughter Nandini, Kama then can, could grant a wish to any true seeker. One should see offer obeisances to and circumambulate the cow. By doing so, it is like one has circumambulated the entire earth with its seven islands. This is from Govapanishad. So Govamata is to be worshipped. And Lord Krishna had a lot of relations with the cows, as we already discussed. In his original form in the spiritual world, Lord Krishna is a cowherd boy in an agricultural community of Golok. And Golok, Lok means planet, Go means cow, cow planet. <laughs> Even the name of um, the spiritual world or the main planet of the spiritual world is Golok, named after the cow. <laughs> Golok Bindavan, where he keeps unlimited transcendental Surabhi cows. Cows and Krishna have always been together. When he descends to earth 5,000 years ago, Krishna brought a replica of Vrindavan with him and he spent his childhood tending cows and calves 
while playing in the pasturing grounds with his friends. His example shows the importance of cows to human society, the practical benefits of caring for them and the advantages of an agrarian economy based on cooperation between men and cows. So this is um, really, Krishna sets the example, sets the mood. He himself uh, is so close to Gomata. And um, this is very interesting in Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, 10th canto, 35th verse, uh, chapter, 18th, 19th verse. Now Krishna is standing somewhere, this is in the forest, counting his cows on a string of gems. So when they went grazing in the forest, there would be lakhs of cows. Nanda Maharaj had nine lakh cows. And Krishna would have counting beads. And who would he count? He would count the cows. He wears a garland of tulsi flowers that bears the fragrance of his beloved. And he has thrown his arm over the, the shoulder of an affectionate cowherd friend. As Krishna plays his flute and sings, the music attracts the black deer's wives who, who approach that ocean of transcendental qualities and sit down beside him. Just like us cowherd girls, they have given up all hope for happiness in family life. <laughs> So this is really interesting. Krishna is standing somewhere counting his cows on a string of gems. <laughs> so in the purport, more explanation is given by Prabhupada. Srila Jiva Goswami explains that in the afternoon, Krishna dresses himself in the new, in new clothing and then went out to uh, call the cows home. Srila Vishwanu Chakravati gives the following information about the transcendental cows of Vrindavan. For each of the four colors of cows, white, red, black, and yellow, there are 25 divisions, making a total of 100 colors. And such qualities as being colored like sandalwood pulp tillet, or having a sh head shaped like a madanga drum, create eight further groups. So there's 108 groups of cows. To count these 108 groups of cows distinguished by color and form, Krishna is using a string of 108 jewel beads. And that's why one of the reasons why we chant on 108 beads is because of this very reason. Krishna also has 108 um, beads consisting of gems. And he uses them to count the gomatas. And that's why we also use 108 beads. Of course, there are other reasons as well. 108 main gopis, 108 Upanishads. But this is one of the most important reasons why we use 108. Thus, when Krishna calls out, hey, Davali, the name of the white cow, a whole group of white cows come forward. When he calls Hamsi, Chandini, Ganga, Mukta, and so on. The 24 other groups of white cows come. The reddish cows are called Aruni, Kumkum, Saraswati, etc. The blackish cows are Shyamala, Dumala, Yamuna, etc. And the yellowish ones are Pita, Pingala, Harit, Haritalika, etc. Those in the group with tilak marks on their foreheads are called Chitrita, Chitra Tilak, Dirga Tilak, and Tiriyak Tilak. And there are groups known as Madanga Mukhi, this Madanga head, Simha Mukhi, Lion Head, and so on. Thus being given, thus being called by name, the cows are coming forward in Krishna, thinking that when it is time to bring them back from the forest, none should be forgotten is counting them on the jewel beads. So this is uh, so interesting. This is how Krishna spends his time, not just here, but also in Golok Bindavan, looking after the Gomatas.
So see how important she is. Krishna is giving so much attention to Govard. This is a bit of an idea of um, Gomata, what she looks like uh, in Bharat. This on the left hand side is Gir Gomata, generally found in Gujarat. Milk is very rich and she's very costly as well. Sahib, Bal, Red Sindhu, Kankaraj. And then on this uh, right hand side, or left hand side, sorry, this is the right hand side. This is the left hand side. We have Gomatas who are uh, perhaps more um, popular in the West. The Jersey and the Brown Swiss and Current Swiss. Krishna has had many glorious pastimes with cows, as he would tend the cows. And there are some fantastic uh, paintings which depict Krishna's pastimes with his Gomatas. They would be so close to him, they rest with him. They would be enchanted by him, and he's enchanted by them. So many Gomatas. <laughs> So when he was two years and five months, he was allowed to take the calves into the forest with Balaram next to him. Always Balaram was next to him with the other coward boys. Sometimes they would have great fun with uh, the milk of the cows. You can see here, Krishna is pouring the, from the teeth straight into Balaram's mouth. <laughs> Every day he would milk her, he would do arti to her and be so close to God. So, what are these pastimes? Krishna was once bathed in cow urine. After the killing of Putna, he killed Putna. And in order to give him protection, they uh, bathed him with uh, cow urine. So this is really interesting. Uh, in the Bhagavatam 10th chapter 6th, uh, so 10th can to 6th chapter 20th verse. Go mutrena snapya itava punargo rajasar bakam raksham chakruscha sakrata dvadasangeshu namabhi. The child was thoroughly washed with cow dung and then smeared with the dust raised from by the movements of the cows. Then different names of the Lord were applied with cow dung on 12 different parts of his body, beginning with the forehead. And this is the Nomu Tilak that we do, Om Kishavai Nama, Om Narayi Nama, Om Madhavi Nama, Om Govinda Nama, Om Mishvai Nama, etc. As done in applying the Tilak, in this way the child was given protection. So Gomata is uh, so uh, important in Krishna's life. Krishna expanded himself for one full year as the calves when Brahma kidnapped the cows, so the calves and the um, cowherd boys. So Krishna expanded himself, not just as cowherd boys, but as the calves as well. And when the calves would go back after the grazing in the forest, their mothers would become so happy to see them, even more happy than they would see their own child. But they didn't realize this is not their child. This is Krishna himself. Krishna had expanded himself. But they had so much love, even much more love than they had for their ch children, their calves. This was when Krishna was Ill, three years and 11 months. Krishna is properly known as Govinda, one who pleases the cows. Gopal, protector of the cows. Krishna's name of Govinda, given when Indra tried to calm Pijvasis. That name was given by Surabhi. So, this is when Krishna stopped the puja of Indra. And Indra became very unhappy. And he started pelting rain down. And Krishna lifted Govardhan at that time and 
gave protection and shelter to the Bijbasis and the Gaumatas. And then Indra realized, oops, made a terrible mistake. <laughs> and he came asking for forgiveness. But Krishna said, well, you tried to kill my relatives. Those who are mine, you tried to kill. How can I forgive you? But Indra was clever. He brought Surabhi with him. And Surabhi begged Krishna, please forgive Indra. And Krishna never refuses the desire of the Gomata. So in that way, um, Krishna uh, forgave Indra. And Surabhi at that time gave him the name Govinda. The cows would love to hear Krishna call out their names. So sometime when Krishna was calling out their names, or he would call out the group of names, and the group of cows would come, some of them wouldn't come. So then, because they wanted to hear Krishna call out their personal name, they would really become ecstatic. So Krishna would call out their names, and they would come to him. <laughs> On Gopastami, Krishna grazed the, the, um, the cows, the big, big cows, for the first time. And go, um, Yashoda Mai was very worried that, oh, you're going deep in the forest. You should wear shoes. You should have an umbrella. So Krishna said, okay, in that case, every cow has to have an umbrella. Every cow has to have shoes. And there's 900,000 times four is 3.6 million shoes. He showed him, I said, no, it's okay, you go. <laughs> that was when he was five years, two months old. First time he took the cows. And he would walk in front and the Gomatas would be absolutely mesmerized. They would look at, look, to look at him and follow him. Krishna would perform Aarti to the Gomatas every day. Only Krishna and Gomata wear peacock feathers on their heads. There you go. He's doing Aarti. He's going to do Aarti. They're wearing peacock feathers. In the Vishnu Purana, it says, Namo Brahmanaya Devaya Go Brahmanaya Taya Cha Chagatitaya Krishnaya Govindaya Namo Nama. My Lord, you are the well-wisher of the cows and the Brahmins. You are well-wisher of the entire human society and world. Go, Pamanya. Go comes first. Go, Mata. Shira Popa had a lot to say about cow protection. Lord Krishna as Govinda is more inclined to the Brahmins and the cows, indicating thereby that human prosperity depends more on these two items, namely Brahmanical culture and cow protection. Lord Krishna is never satisfied whether these are lacking. Cow protection means feeding the Brahmanical culture, which leads towards God consciousness, and thus perfection of human civilization is achieved. So this is uh, Srimad Bhagavatam 119.3. Without protection of cows, Brahmanical culture cannot be maintained. And without Brahmanical culture, the aim of life cannot be fulfilled. This is Simad Bhagavatam 8.24.5. One cannot become spiritually advanced without acquiring the Brahmanical qualifications and giving protection to cows. Bhagavatam 6.18.52. So again, I can, we can see um, in the Bhagavatam, Krishna, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains the um, functioning of society through the Varnashram system. And here he's talking to about the Varna. Krishi Gorakshaya Vanijyam Vaishya Karma Swabhavajam Paricharyatma Kam Karma Sudras Yapi Swapavajam. Farming, cow protection, and business are the natural work for the Vaish. 
and for the Sudras, their labor and service to others. So there you go. Krishna is identifying cow protection as an important fu function for one of the um, uh, one of the varnas, vaish. But actually, the cow protection flows right throughout the varnasham. The Brahmins are also involved in protection of cows. Kshatriyas, by their strength, are to protect the cows. Like Maharaj Parikshit, when he saw Gomata, or when he saw Dharam uh, in the form of bull being harassed, was ready to do anything to protect. Vaish, we can see from here. And Shudras, by offering their labor for, to, for the Gomatas, are also there for the protection of Gomata. Actually, the whole of Varnashram is to protect Gomata. And how do the Brahmins protect? Because they understand the value of Gomata, because the Vedic scriptures speak about the value. So they educate society about Gomata. Many pastimes of Gomata. And one of the most incredible ones is Vashishta and uh, Vishwamitra. One time Vishwamitra, who was a king, came with his army to the ashram of Vashishta. And Vashishta welcomed them and said, yes, I can offer you a feast. Vishwamitra was wondering how you're going to manage that because you are a poor sage. Don't worry, Vashishta said, I'll sort it. And um, Vashishta was the keeper of Surabi. And Surabi could offer anything. So a huge feast was produced by Surabhi. And when Mishwamitra saw what was happening, he was amazed. And he asked Vashishta, I want the cow. He told him, I want the Surabhi. And uh, Vashishta said, okay, if you can take her. But uh, Surabhi said, no, I'm staying with Vashishta. So Vishwamitra said, everything that belongs to Vashishta belongs to me because the kingdom is mine. doesn't matter. I'm not leaving. I am under the protection of Vashishta. So then there was a battle between Vishwamitra and Vashishta, and Vashishta defeated Vishwamitra, even though Vishwamitra had a huge army at his disposal with weapons. Vashishta had simply his sannyas danda, but that was enough to defeat. And then Vishwamitra decided, ah, no point being a Kshatriya because the Brahmins are more powerful. I want to become a Brahmin. So eventually he does become a but did, did you ask like why did you think like the Okay. So this is uh Bashish and Vishamitra. Uh, Guru Maharaj was very keen on cow protection. Uh, he set up a Goshala, uh, still, which is still going, in Kalkidam, with many Gomatas being looked after. Status of Gomata, as important as citizens, it is also significant that Vasudev inquired about the welfare of Nand Maharaj's animals. The animals, especially the cows, are, were protected exactly in the manner of one's children. Was there was a Shatri and Nanda was a Vish. It is the duty of the Shatriyas to give protection to the citizens of mankind and it is the duty of the Vish to give protection to the cows. Cows are as important as the citizens. Just as cow, as this as human, this is human citizens should be given all kinds of protection. So the cows also should be given full protection. So this is Krishna book, volume one, chapter five. And Gomata actually uh, uh, are very sensitive. Um, should be treated as part of the family. The bull is considered the father of the society. He helps in farming and producing grains. While the cow is regarded as the mother, she produces the milk which nourishes the family. So in um, in 2017, neuroscientists Lori Marino and Christine Ellen produced a paper called The Psychology of Cows, which explains that cows are bright and emotional individuals. Farmers are often, often relay how cows reciprocate with them with love and affection. 
Many wonder why the Vedic and Vaishnav cultures especially stress protection of the cow. The philosophy is very simple. The cow is considered one of our mothers as she gives us her milk and thus nurtures our health and well-being. Just as no civilized person can would injure or kill their mother, the Vedic, the Vedic, the Vedas teach that to take milk from the cow and to kill her is the same as killing one's mother. Similarly, the bull is considered like the father because the bull traditionally helps in the tilling of the fields and is thus to be respected. Cows and bulls are, are also produce dung and urine, which is valuable as fertilizer, compost, medicines, cleaning products, biogas, fuel. In Goshalas, they are sheltered in barns, wherein they are fed with healthy staple and are taken care of. Walls of houses are covered with cow dung to ward off insects. Yagnir kuns are also covered with cow dung to make them auspicious. So in that way, Gomata is protected. She gives protection and she should be protected as well. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he states in his previous incarnation, he gave protection to the cows as Krishna. And this is the worst. Gopa Gre Janma Chile Chila Gabira Rakala Sepunye Hailan Ebe Brahmana Chorya Yala. In my last birth, I was born in a family of coward men. I gave protection to the cows and the calves, calves and the cows. Because of such pious activities, I have now become a son of a brown. <laughs> Of course, the Lord doesn't need to produce or uh, perform pious activities. This is his humility. So Chaitanya describes the horrific future of such living entities um, who, who harass cows, who uh, kill cows, to the Chandakasi. Gonge yatalomā tata Sahasa Batsara Goveti Vati Raura Madi Pasche Nirantara. Cow killers and cow eaters are condemned to rot in a hellish condition of life for as many thousands of years as there are hairs on the body of each cow they eat. So this is an idea of karma and reincarnation. Blessings of Gomata. The Gomatas give their blessings in the form of Panchakabhya. Cow dung is Gomai. He absorbs the heat. Cow urine, Gomutra, healing powers. Milk, easy to digest. As a result, it is used as a substitute for mother's milk and it's not fattening. Yogurt, Godahi. It destroys what? It increases strength. Ghee, Gohart. It is useful for eyes and wounds. And um, yeah, this, uh, this is a reference to the Vedic gift shop where they sell these wonderful ingredients. To install the deities, these five ingredients are required. These five here. In Bhishma Panchak, fast is done at the end of Kartik by taking these five blessings. So benefits of cow dung can be beneficial in the following way. When cow dung is burnt, it balances atmospheric temperature and kills germs in the air. It has antiseptic and anti-radioactive and anti-thermal properties. When we coat the walls and clean the floors of home, home, house with cow dung, it protects the dwellers. So a long time back, 1984, there was a gas leak in Bhopal, which killed more than 20,000 people. Those living in houses with cow dung coated Walls were not affected, which is that's quite amazing. Atomic power centers in India and Russia, even today, use cow dung to shield radiation. Cow dung fertilizer is important in helping to improve the structure of the soil. Animal manure has been used for centuries as a fertilizer in farming. So, worship of Gomata. 
according to the ancient Vedic texts, the cow is a representative of Mother Earth. When the cow and the bull are mistreated, Mother Earth withdraws her bounty. Cow should be treated as auspicious and also a symbol of compassion and piousness. So highly were cows held in esteem by the society that there were days fixed in the yearly calendar for exclusive worship of the cow. Go puja during Govatan, for example. Krishna established that worship in favor of the worship of Indra. May cows stand in front of me, may cows stand behind me, may cows stand on both sides of me, may I always reside in the midst of cows. So Rupa Goswami in Hari Bhakti Lass. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Bhagavatam, I can be worshipped within the cows by offering of grass and other suitable grains and paraphernalia for the pleasure and health of the cows. So when the opportunity arises, we should always try to feed Gomata. In Bharat, it's very easy that Gomata is everywhere. And usually there is somebody with some feed that we can buy and, and feed the Gomata. But if we can't do that, because in our place where we are, in the UK, there's not many cows, at least mentally we can think and feed the Gomata. Manasi Seva. There's one Swami, Bhakti Raga Swami, he is very good on um, Gomata and he says that dharma begins with the protection of cows, which is what's stated in the scriptures. And we unfortunately become disconnected with cows. We no longer care for cows. We do not see them. Krishna, however, daily worships cows. He lives with them. He can't live without cows. So how can we practice our Krishna consciousness without thinking about cows? Right? Very important. So we have to also get into cow consciousness. <laughs> Many devotees only take ahimsa milk from protected cows. So some scriptural references. Um, wherever this thirsty cow drinks water from, that body of water is as good as Ganga, Go, Yamuna, Sindhu, or so to speak. In the body of the cows, all holy places and rivers are present. Lakshmi Devi resides in cow dung simply by the cow's touch and sight. She purifies all living entities. Amongst all purified objects, she is the most pure. And among all auspicious objects, she is the most auspicious. Gomati Nitya Bhai Parshura. O Bharat, nothing is rare for a devotee of the cow. Whatever such devotee desires, they achieve. A lady who is devoted to a cow can have her desires fulfilled by the cow's mercy. One who desires a son or a daughter, who desires wealth, who desires piety or knowledge, all get their desires fulfilled by the mercy of the cow. In other religions, um, in Islam, there's an Iranian scholar, Al-Ghazali. He was a brilliant philosopher of Islam. He states that beside pieces of bread, whatever we eat is simply to satisfy our urges. At the age of 28, he headed the Institute of Islam in Baghdad. His main book, Iya Ulum Uldin, The Revival of Religious Science, is highly respected. And in this book, the detrimental effects of beef and virtues of clarified butter and milk from a cow are stated as follows. The meat of the cow is mars, disease. Its milk is suffer, its health, and its clarified butter, butter is uh, dava, medicine. Very interesting. We find in Isaiah, where Jesus scorns the slaughter and bloodshed of humans and animals, he declares that God does not hear the prayers of animal killers but your iniquities have separated you from your God and your sins have hid his face from you so that he does not hear. For your hands are stained with blood, their feet run to evil and they hasten to shed innocent blood. They know not the ways of peace. Isaiah also laments that he saw joy and merrymaking, slaughter of cattle and killing of sheep, eating of meat and drink of wine, as you thought, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. 
<laughs> he's also established in the Bible that he that killed an ox is as if he slew a man. In this regard, St. Basil taught, the steam of meat darkens the light of the spirit. One can hardly have virtue if one enjoys meat meals and feasts. Wow. And there's a tribe in Sudan, actually. They treat cows as their equals. They worship cows. They have some big horns. Oh, Well, cow slaughter is really predominant in this world. 80 billion animals get slaughtered. And 300 million cows are slaughtered. 800,000 800, every single day. And uh, unfortunately, India is a big exporter. I'm sure it still is a big exporter of cows. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. What can we do? Well, become the important the importance of Gomata. Make others in, in uh, aware. Adopt a Gomata. That's a really good one. And we're doing that in Bandavan. Support projects which promote protection of cows. Go Shala. Veganism is not necessarily a good thing. I think as long as the protection of cows is, is put at the forefront, then it's fair enough. So I wanted to stop there. Any questions, any comments? Um, we have Prabhu here. Uh, Surinder, Prabhu, anything you'd like to share? Hare Krishna, very interesting Prabhu, Dandavat uh, Prabhu and uh, Dandavat to all the Vaishnavas, Nitai Guru Hare Yes, Hare. and uh, in uh, Prem Dham Deva Stotram, there is one verse mm -hmm. as follows, Prema Gunja Nali Punja Pushpa Punja Ranjitam Gita Nritya Daksha Pakshi Vriksha Laksha Vanditam Gau Vrishadi Nada Dipta Purva Modam Edhuram and the translation uh, is as follows. While strolling through the forest groves of Rindavan, Goranga Mahaprabhu was joyfully welcomed by swarms of humming bumblebees, busily engaged in discussion about pure love as they hovered over the blooming flowers. Millions of trees lining the forest groups harmoniously offered their uh, respects unto Lord Gorasundara in unison with a variety of birds that were expertly singing and dancing in sheer delight. The Lord's mind became overflooded by loving feelings due to remembering how the cows, calves, and oxen of the holy abode of Vrindavan would affectionately call for him in previous pastimes, thereby elating his emotions in pure love. I offer my obeisances to that beautiful golden lord, Goranga Sunda, the divine form of Krishna Prema. Nitai Go Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Nitai Go Hare Krishna. Thank you. So, Go Mataki Jai.